Hello friends, let us now learn some important points about environment and health. In this, we are going to learn about water. The term safe and wholesome water is important. We call water as safe and wholesome if it is free from pathogenic agents, free from harmful chemicals and it is pleasant and good to taste and it, if the water is usable for domestic purposes then we call that water has safe and wholesome water if these criteria are not fulfilled then we call it has polluted or contaminated water so first sources of water so we get water from rain water surface water ground water rain water is the purest source of water the price source of all water is rain the water which we get from rain is very soft water and this contains 0.005 percent of traces of solid and gibraltar depends on the rain water has a source of supply then the second source of water is surface water surface water has impounding reservoirs impounding reservoirs like artificial lakes for storing water these are artificial lakes for storing water they are present in metropolitan cities like mumbai chennai nagpur they derive water from impounding reservoirs the purity of this impounding reservoirs is next to the rain water so they are second best in purity then the next type of surface waters are river and stream rivers and streams are grossly polluted water they are unfit for drinking without treatment you will have to uh, treat the water and make them purify and then use for drinking the cities like delhi kolkata ahmedabad use river and stream waters third type is tanks ponds and lakes ground water can be shallow wells shallow wells are moderately hard water they are grossly contaminated water shallow water it has tap water from above first impervious water shallow wells are those tap what this this will taps water from above first impervious layer second deep wells deep well is much hard pure water deep well has constant supply of water it taps water from below the first impervious layer above the in first impervious layer we have shallow wells below the first impervious layer we have deep wells then we have springs these are the different sources of water then we have some criteria for identification of problem habitations criteria for identification of problem habitations include number 1 not covered or no safe source habitation there is no safe source of water at all so this has three main criteria one drinking water source point is not within 1 point is not within 1.6 kilometers in plains or 100 meters elevation in hilly areas then we can call it has no no no, no safe water source if water source which is present is affected with some quality issues like excess salinity or presence of micronutrients like iron fluoride arsenic uh, in huge amounts or toxic material or if it is biologically contaminated water then there is no safe water habitation then if the quantum of availability of safe water is not enough to meet the drinking and cooking needs of the population if the water which is available is not sufficient even then we call it has problem habitations in no safe source habitation at all then 
second partially covered habitation in partially covered habitation here the drinking water source point is within 1. Point, uh, 1.6 kilometers in plains or if it is 100 meters elevation in hilly areas then it is called as partially covered habitations then if the capacity of system of water is 10 to 20 ipcd then we call it as partially covered water we have fully covered habitations are those with the good amount of water that is if the above are not true then obviously it's full covered habitations then purification of water purification of water can be divided into two types one large scale purification and small scale purification in large scale purification we in it includes storage of water either by physical chemical and biological means it also includes filtration like slow sand or biological filters rapid sand or mechanical filters then the third type of large scale purification of water is disinfection of water has chlorination ozonation uv irradiation small scale purification of water include household purification of water like and also disinfection of wells disinfection of wells can be through bleaching powder that is chemical disinfection of wells which is small scale household purification of water can be through boiling or usage of chemical disinfectant like bleaching powder or usage of chlorine solution or usage of high test hypochlorite solution usage of uh, solutions like chloride iodide kmno4 or uh, filtration where we use filters ceramic filters or pasture chamberland filters can be used or burkfield filters can be used for filtration of water so these are different aspects of purification of water then we have uh, we have important thing is sand filters we have two different types of sand filters rapid sand filters and slow sand filters rapid sand filters they occupy very little space whereas slow sand filters occupy large area rapid salt filters rate of filtration is 200 mgad whereas slow sand filter is two to three uh, times then effective size of salt sand in rapid sand filter is 0 0.4 to 0 0.7 in snow sand slow sand filter it is 0 0.2 to 0 0.3 Pre preliminary treatment in rapid sand filter is coagulation and sedimentation it is plain sedimentation in slow sand filter washing in rapid sand filter is by back washing whereas that in slow sand filter is by scraping the sand bed frequent washing is required uh, for rapid sand filter we require the frequent washing not required for slow sand filter a mechanism of action of rapid sand filter is mainly by physical means whereas the mechanism of action of slow sand filter is mainly by is both physical and mechanical operation of high sand uh, rapid sand filter is high skilled and that of slow sand filter is less skilled loss of head allowed is six to eight feet in rapid sand filter and it is four feet in slow sand filter removal of turbidity is good for both rapid and slow sand filter removal of color is good for rapid sand filter and it is fair in so slow sand filter removal of bacteria is 98 to 99 percent in rapid sand and 99.9 .9 to 99.99 percent .99 in slow sand filter sustainability is for big cities in rapid sand filter and it is for smaller towns in slow sand filter then 
if you see who recommendation for drinking water quality this is very important according to who the criteria for normal drinking water quality are if the color is less than 15 true color units turbidity less than 5 nephalometric turbidity units if the fluorine amount required is less than 1.5 ppm if ph of the solution is less than uh, is around 6.5 to 8.5 if hardness of the water is less than 100 to 300 milligram per liter if total dissolved solids is around total dissolved solids is around 600 milligram per liter and zero pathogenic microorganisms presence of zero infective viruses no pathogenic protozoa or infective stages of helminths active stages of helminths then if nitrates in good quality drinking water should contain less than 3 milligram per liter nitrates should be more than 50 milligram per liter then gross alpha radiological activity should be less than 0 0.5 becquerel per liter and gross beta radiological activity should be less than 1 becquerel per liter then um, chlorination of water the let us learn some points about chlorination of water chlorination of water is the disinfecting action of chlorine in water that is hypochlorous acid more than hypochlorite ions here in disinfection of water with chlorine we use hypochlorous acid mostly this is this has residual germicidal action if you see the phases of chlorination is very important the phases of chlorination include first formation one we have formation of chloramines second destruction of chloramines can occur the chloramines can get destructed third there can be appearance of break point can be there fourth there can be accumulation of free residual chlorine all these phases names are important then recommended period of contact for residual chlorine the recommended period of contact for residual chlorine in water is around one hour so this recommended contact period and recommended residual of chlorine level depends upon the type of water right so uh, if you see first if we if we take drinking water drinking water has uh, more um, requires more than 0 0.5 milligram per liter ppm of recommended residual chloride level for a contact period of one hour water bodies post disaster require more than 0 0.7 milligrams per liter of chlorine for a contact period of one hour swimming pool sanitation requires more than one milligram per liter of chlorine for a contact period of one hour so this is the recommended chlorine level then instruments used in chlorination of water are we have three different instruments which are useful in chlorination of water one horox apparatus Horox apparatus tells us about the chlorine demand estimation. Chlorinator or chloronome tells us about the mixing or irregular doses of chlorine which is required for uh, disinfection. Chloroscope is the instrument which measures residual level of chlorine is chloroscope. Then we have to learn about the tests of chlorination tests of chlorination are of three types we have ortho toluidine test first test is ortho toluidine test this ortho toluidine test measures the free chlorine 
that is residual chlorine level and it also measures the free plus combined chlorine levels then we have ortho toluidine arsenide arsenide test ortho toluidine arsenide test measures the free chlorine and combined chlorine separately it measures free chlorine separately combined chlorine separately so it is a better test when compared to ortho toluidine test <coughs> so let us now learn some important points about herox apparatus if you see herox apparatus is a type of uh, instrument used in chlorination and it is used to find out the dose of bleaching powder which is required for disinfection of water so this will help us to estimate the chlorine demand of water so the herox apparatus contains the six white cups which are around 200 ml capacity it contains one black cup with a circular mark inside and it contains two metal spoons seven glass stirring rods the indicator used in herox apparatus is starch iodine indicator is used we use starch iodine indicator which gives blue color so we will have to find out the dosage of bleaching powder required or chlorine demand is given by the formula n into 2 grams of bleaching powder for 455 liters of water where n is the first cup which shows distinct blue color the blue color which we get due to this starch iodine the first cup which we get is taken into account and that is uh, the dose then hardness of water so let us learn some important points about hardness of the water in the next class thank you guys for watching my lecture thank you